Greetings, my name is Brother Herman of MakeEmSeeTheTruth.org. We are a nonprofit organization who has been commissioned by a Holy Trinity to be used to bring forth and restore these values that are dissipating slowly, but at an alarming rate uh, within our communities. We are going to restore the correct informations that are lacking in these in the certain individuals or many individuals that are walking around in our diverse nations that make up our community. We have three different areas that we're taking a look at because these three are the three vital areas that uh, when liking that correct information brings a poor uh, perception on life in general. So we want to be used to funnel back the correct truths and informations and the factual data back into these minds that are walking around lost and confounded. Uh, we are a nonprofit organization who will be giving back to our communities less fortunate. The less fortunate simply means those who are lacking the correct information. The most fortunate are those who have this information and have been abundantly prospered because of it. So we're requiring and asking that our most fortunate, our community's most fortunate, assist us in this mission. You can help us at MakeEmSeeTheTruth.org. On the front page, there is a button. You can click the To Assist Us button, and it will take you directly to our donation site, which is YouCaring.com forward slash Our Children's Children hyphen 761449. Or you can go to an independent site, which is GoFundMe.com forward slash MakeEmSeeTheTruth hyphen ORG. At any rate, whatever you're called to do or move to do, we appreciate it because we're going to use it to restore values back into our communities less fortunate. One case, one life, and one individual at a time. So the three areas that we're going to be primarily, primarily focused on is the spirituality, in the legal sense or the judicial part of our society, as well as the medical counseling. And the reason is, is because when you lack spiritual informations and truths and you lack judicial informations and truths, as well as medical informations and, and facts, then we what, what happens is, is that we operate in, in, in uh, aired knowledge or un, incompleted knowledge or information, and therefore we are more susceptible of making aired decisions when, when faced with different choices in these different areas, which then will result in a hopelessness or a a a a uh, a, a poverty or a state of disparity, and we are seeing and witnessing the, these types of individuals walking around outside in our society, as well as those who have been trapped up and gone inside into our uh, our society's prison system. So. We want to be uh, useful and, and be a part of the solution instead of a part of the problem. And we've made up our minds to give back that which was freely given to us. I have a partner. His name is Dr. Thomas Junk. He's with the Cons Helping Cons organization, which simply helps those who have been trapped up uh, into captivity to come back from captivity into our society or communities with a nice transition. Uh, so that is the area in which he's mostly focused at, but he is he's offered to reach uh, give a handout anytime I am in need of him. He will be there for your assistance or for your concerns. And so all we have to do is go to the page three of MakeHimSeeTheTruth.org. There is an assessment application. We're asking that you fill that out in its entirety. So hit the submit button and it'll come directly to us. If it's a spiritual matter, someone who's certified like we are, all are, or someone who is uh, ordained like we are, all are, will be the ones to return that phone call or that email. If it is a legal matter, the same applies as well as the medical issue. The same applies. We're going to be focusing on the spiritual matter first. So there's five different series that are we're going to be uh, uh, speaking in and over, which is, uh, we're on the fourth series as of today, we're on the fourth series, we're going to begin that. The fourth series is going to deal with the legal or judicial matters. But before we begin this uh, set of series, which will be five parts, part A through E, we're going to touch on uh, this first series, 
and, 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 and elaborate a little bit about what that was about as well as the second and the third. The first series was basically since all things start in the spirit, we started there. If God is, is the beginning and ending of all things, which we know for sure that he is, and so the creator is spirit, we must start in the spirit if we want to be used to restore values back into the carnal or the fleshly realm. And so that is what we that's where we decided to start from. We started from the spiritual essence of where we come from, the origin, and that is the birthright. The birthright that should be freely given and passed down from father or mother to son to daughter and so forth and so on. And to not be trained up in this manner will not have a uh, um, it'll do a disservice to the to the one who is growing up without it or being reared up without it. And so what that means is, is when we train a child up in the way that they should go, as Proverbs tell us to do, when they get older, they will never forget that with that training so that when they do stray, they'll have something to come back to at the end of their of their be, becoming tired of of themselves, because we all have to come become sick and tired of our, of our own understanding leaning on our own understanding only leads to frustration and aggravation and irritation and so at that point you're going to cry out but if you don't have a training up of who you can cry out to then you'll be stuck out there in the world and that is where the devil our enemy our common enemy wants you so therefore the birthright of who you come who who you are where you come from and who you can cry out to when life's many challenges presents themselves is vital and quintessential so we must receive that and the only way to receive it is to ask for it for if we ask not we have not so when we ask and we receive we are to freely give because it's a reciprocating god that we serve and so everything that he freely gives us we are to freely give back into those who are lacking that is part or series one series two is indicative of the character in which we are called to walk out Martin Luther King said it best. He said, I have a dream that one day uh, we will be judged by the content of our character, not the color of our skin. And so the content of character that we've at MakeHimSeeTheTruth.org has come to understand and realize what he was talking about was and can be found in Galatians 5, 22-25, which is the fruit of, fruit of the Holy Spirit. The fruits of the Holy Spirit is nothing more than the character of our Lord Jesus Christ. Some of you call him Yeshua, which is oh fine and okay as well, because we're still talking about the same Messiah. Different cultures have different names. The same name may not mean the same thing in another culture. So we understand that we're talking about the same deity, which is God's only begotten son. And so therefore, we must be transitioned or transformed into a Christ-like character, into the character of the Messiah, into the character of the Holy Trinity. And that can be found once again in Galatians 5, 22 25. We talked about how to put that on, the mind of Christ. We talked about each part of the fruit of the character, the attributes that we must ascertain and operate in. And so that was what series two was in telling series three, we came with, I believe it was frequently asked questions. There are a lot of questions that are being thrown out there in the world today, and they're not receiving back satisfactory answers. And so what we've at Make Them See the Truth has chosen to do was put together a little series, part A through E in each series, but this five part series in series three was speaking on those frequently asked questions. And so we can rest assured that we uh, give was used to give back satisfactory response to the many questions that are asked in our today's society, excuse me. So therefore, if we use God's word to answer anything, we can rest assured that it's the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So we wanna play the whole tape when we answer all questions. In series four, which we will be beginning today, we'll be beginning part A. Series four is going to be talking about the legal judicial system. What can happen when we lack correct information and the correct and the right knowledge 
when it comes time to uh, face our judicial system. It is a truth that when you get in front of a judge, the judge will say, ignorance is no defense. And so therefore, we must all take heed to that because we don't know when our day and time will come to be standing in front of a, a earthly judge. And so therefore, we must know something about our laws that are governing our states and our cities, ordinances, our states, uh, uh, statutes, as well as our country's um, amendments. Sometimes when you don't know your rights, then your rights can be violated very easily, which I will speak of because I'm a victim of that myself. I am currently in, in the court as we speak, and so I will not talk about my case because that it would not be a wise thing to do. But at the same time, I can use it as a platform to speak today. When I went inside, falsely arrested, wrongfully convicted, unconstitutionally convicted, I might add, because my rights were violated. I have a letterhead from the NAACP that you can see on my website as well. And you will see where they agree that my rights were violated. They came out and paid me a visit and they confirmed this, that my rights were viol in, indeed violated. I had no idea that my rights were violated at the time that they came. I just was working on uh, what I've been hearing and what I've been told. So once I found that out, I became very thirsty and hungry to learn law. So much so that I learned my case inside out and now I can talk about my case, at least the foundation to my case, so that it can help others to avoid these types of traps that were set for me and a lot of others. I've come to learn that there are many others that are like me. They're just waiting for their day in court as well. There are a, a lot more than that who, whose rights have been violated and they have no idea that they're in there illegally or wrongfully. And so now we're going to talk a little bit about that. I'm going to give you the basics on what to look out for and each area starting from point A to point Z. When you are arrested, there's a thing called probable cause, and that is the Fourth Amendment of our Constitution. I suggest that you take time out of your day or your busy week, pick an hour to Google Fourth Amendment. And I suggest that you study it up a little bit more than you know about. If you know about it, fine. If you don't, this is for you. I would advise you to study it up because there are many times where our probable cause uh, rights are violated because they have none or they are creating that which is not or non-existent. And so we must know about the Fourth Amendment because this is where the arrest will take place. If they violate the Fourth Amendment, then there's a thing called false arrest that will take, take place. And so therefore, if you can prove this, everything after that is null and void, meaning there will be no jurisdiction for the court to hear your matter. They will hear your matter if your right has been violated and you have no idea that it was violated. That's step one. Step two, if they have you legally uh, by probable cause, would be something called the show cause order. You can find this in the amendment number five. What that means is, is that they have a certain amount of time to bring forth this to a grand jury or to a, 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 a panel of judges whose job it is to look over what the, the police has on his affidavit as well as the prosecutor job is to go behind the police officer to make sure that the police officer has the facts and not just opinions or should we say hearsay because that is the technical term for or legal term for opinionated evidence if it is hearsay the prosecutor's job then becomes one of to file a no info 
or no information found on your behalf as a citizen of this country. But what happens is, is that a lot of times they'll still go ahead and file charges even though they have only hearsay, which is what happened in my case. That is a violation of our Fifth Amendment, but you will not know this if you do not know the law. It only becomes personal when it becomes personal. And so it became personal when they violated my rights. I am now being moved and able to give back the basics so that those who lack this correct information or this correct knowledge can at least go Google these amendments so that you can see for yourself and how they work. Now the next step if they have you by rights with the show cause and they can go ahead and file charges or the information is against you is to make sure that you receive proper legal representation. This can be found under the Sixth Amendment which means you are required by the constitutional laws and the state laws to have competent counsel or representation speaking on your behalf because they went to school for this years and you have no knowledge of what they're talking about half the time. So you are not considered competent in order to argue against someone who is, which is the state prosecutor. So therefore they will appoint a lawyer on behalf of you. Sometimes it's a court appointed attorney which is nothing more than a private attorney who does pro bono from time to time. In most cases, it's a public defender. We call it defender now because of the forum, but the, the slang term would be public pretender because they get paid by the state and they play with the state. So who do you, whose side do you really think most public defenders are on? It is not our side. If you Google public defender, it'll, it'll give you the def, proper definition and it will tell you whose side they're really on. But I'll let you do that and figure that out for yourself because that's not what this is about. What this is about is to tell you that you or inform you that you have a right to proper representation. It is your trial attorney's job or your court appointed attorney's job or the public defender's job to investigate on your behalf to make sure that the prosecutor has everything that he needs or she needs to bring forth your person in front of the judge's courtroom, which gives them jurisdiction to hear your matter. For failure of the trial counsel to investigate properly and make sure that there is credible evidence against you is the synonymous with incompetent counsel. Incompetent or ineffective assistance of counsel, which can be found on the 3.850, that is the, 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 the uh, statute for uh, post-conviction, uh, this will uh, inform you as to exactly what the trial counsel's duties are and what they are supposed to be doing for you when you find yourself in a court of law. For failure to do so proves incompetence and you have a now have a claim against your trial attorney. There is a 14th amendment called due process and due process means just that, due process. You have a right to have all of these amendments that I've just spoken of prior to be in order so that the court can have proper jurisdiction to hear your matter or hear your case. For failure for the prosecutor to have the credible evidence that is against you to, to, to still bring your matter to court without this and on nothing more than just hearsay is a violation of your due process rights. Failure for your trial attorney to go behind the prosecutor and make sure that he has done his job so that he has your person in front of the judge legally is a violation of your Sixth Amendment 
rights. Failure to have affidavits, and this is just an example, which is the signed sworn testimony of material witnesses. Those who say I saw him do something, failure to have that from the police officer, and then failure for the prosecutor to go behind the police officer to make sure that it's not just the police officer's affidavits, which is his knowledge, is a violation of your Fifth Amendment show cause rights. Failure to have any kind of warrant, warranting evidence for your arrest is a violation of your Fourth Amendment rights by the police officer. So what happens is it's a trickle down effect like a set of dominoes. When you violate one right, nine times out of 10, you're gonna violate another. And all we have to do is follow the trail. The trail is gonna to lead to a wrongful conviction, which is also synonymous with an unconstitutional conviction. Unconstitutional convictions become the matters of the federal court or the US courthouses. And these matters are only when the rights have been violated. You are now in a vehicle called the petition of habeas corpus. Or if it's a state matter, it will be placed in a 3850, which is a 3.850 motion for post-conviction release. You will then be in the Supreme Court, the state Supreme Court, for that matter, if the rights have not been violated and they just broke a few laws here and there to get you there. Now, we must remember one thing, that the prosecutor must seek a conviction by the preponderance of the evidence, and it must be a fair uh, uh, trial. He cannot seek a conviction by any means necessary. He can only seek justice by any means necessary. Let's not twist those two. The trial attorney's job is to make sure that your rights are protected, to make sure that your best interests are at, in mind and at hand. For failure for him to do so is a indicative of ineffective assistance of counsel. The appellate counsel's job is to go behind the trial counsel to make sure that the trial counsel dotted his I's and crossed his T's. For failure for the appellate trial counsel or the appellate counsel who can be appointed by the court in a direct appeal, failure for him to go behind the trial counsels and the transcripts and make sure that everything was done properly is a violation. It is a ineffective assistance of, of appellate counsel that can be done on a direct appeal. Failure for him to do that also is a Martinez claim, Martinez versus Ryan. We have Brady claims and we have all different types of laws in, in place to, to secure our rights and make sure that we get proper uh, uh, venue and are heard so that we, some of these cases can be heard by the DCAs, which is the D District Courts of Appeals, and they can be overturned with the proper merit in the proper vehicles with the proper informations. And you can have a just claim, a meritorious claim, but you can also be in the wrong vehicle. You can be arguing a case that should be in the 3850, but you have it in a petition of habeas corpus. corpus, corpus. You can be arguing a, 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 a just claim, but you have it in a petition of habeas corpus, corpus when it should be in a, a motion for post-conviction release. You can be arguing for jail time credit when, and, and have it in a in a 38C, which is a motion for reconsideration, and it should be in a, in a, in a 38B2, I believe. I can be wrong, but it should be in a motion for jail time credit. So we must make sure that our meritorious claims are in the proper vehicles, which is the proper motions, petitions, and writs. Writs of certiaries are usually the, those writ, those matters that are after the fact, after the motion to uh, to uh, the, the, the post-conviction motion or after the petition of habeas corpus. And so we want to put in a writ of certiorari if we don't get any uh, righteous uh, responses from the second DCAs or the, the district courts of appeals. Make sure that your claim is in the right vehicle. Make sure that the claim is legit. Make sure that your convictions are legit. Make sure that there is a factual basis to your matter. Because if there's no factual basis, 
Google it and you'll see what it means. Then you should not even be standing in front of the judge to begin with. Go behind the prosecutors. Sometimes our public defenders are not doing that for us. Go behind the public defenders. You can't trust anyone that works and get paid by the state. Go behind even a private attorney because he has many cases that he may miss something. Okay? Learn law little by little and you'll be amazed about how much you can amass over time, which will help not only yourselves, but your loved ones, your neighbors. The more knowledge we know, even though we may not never eat, ever need it, the better off we'll be. Why? Because it's always better to have and not need than to need and not have. This is part A. Am I in the right vehicle? Do they have a claim, a just claim against me? Or have my rights been violated? Stay tuned to part B when we talk a little bit more about factual basis. This is Brother Herman of MakeEmSeeTheTruth.org. You can assist us on the front page of our website by clicking on the button that says to assist us. Click here. It'll take you there, and I appreciate whatever it is that you're moved to assist us with. We're going to use those funds to make more motions, make more petitions, make more writs. We're going to use those funds to open up phone lines and people's time so that we can have these certified members that are on the team in our outreaches so that they can make time and free up some time to answer your phone calls. We're going to use these funds to answer those spiritual questions that are fleeting to give you the proper information because our people perish for lack of knowledge. We want to make sure you have this knowledge so that you don't have to merely exist outside of God's presence, but you can get the truth so that it'll bring you and give you a chance to come back into to God's presence and put and ask for God's presence to come inside of you so that you can have a better perception, a better thinking, a better spoken word, and a better behavior while you're out here in our communities. You can become a part of the solution, transition from being a part of the problem. You can go from being a walking curse into a walking blessing simply with acquiring knowledge, the correct information, and operating in them. Thank you again for your time. May God bless us all, and you have yourselves a great night.